Hey guys, Paxinaru here. Um, I want to talk to you about um, one of the major concerns and issues with uh, Ableton Live is the whole uh, plugin delay compensation thing. Whereas if you go on a clip and you put a lot of effects on it, um, then if you want to automate um, like channel things that are on the channel mixer, like um, for example volume, then you will get uh, latency issues and inconsistencies between um, the volume automations that you drew and other automations and it will just end up in the wrong spot. So um, yeah, it's, it's been a really big issue for many people and um, some users are actually kind of you know iffy about whether it will get fixed in the near future or not. So in the meantime, let me give you a sort of a workaround that uh, isn't perfect but it'll, it's, it's a solution that does work and is also really cool for other things. So um, what, what I was thinking is that you can, um, within Ableton, actually not all users know uh, and use this feature, you can um, install some sort of a wave editor that is external to Ableton, whether it be SoundForge or Audacity or um, WaveLab or whatever you want to use. And if you go into the Ableton's preferences, and it is in the file folders right here. Sample editor, once you have it installed, you just browse and you give it the executionable exe, exe file for the wave editor. And you just, that's it, you place it here. And then what will happen in Ableton is whenever you click edit over here on a sample, then it will open it automatically, even if the program is closed. Uh, I have some other things here, so I don't want to close it, but even if SoundForge was closed and I'd click edit, it would automatically open SoundForge and open the sample inside SoundForge, so it would be basically like this, edit. Oh, this one was already open, let's close it. So, I click, uh, I just have here like a stupid little loop. And then all you gotta do, click edit, it'll open it Oh, and it's really low in volume as well. It'll open it inside the wave editor, and then you can do pretty much whatever you want with uh, with the sample. And if it's volume uh, automation that you're after, then all you got to do is basically go to process. Uh, each wave editor has this in its own way. So, and then I have a graphical wave editor, and I can. So it's not perfect. It doesn't have you know you can't really zoom in all the way. Um, and, you know, it's not exactly the same as doing it in a DAW, but it won't have any latency. So if you're just looking for, you know, if you don't need the exact, like, really big resolution that a DAW will give you, and this is enough for you, and in many cases it will be, then you can just use, you know, you can just do it this way. And once you do that, uh, let's do another process instead. Let's just do, just for the example, let's just give gain, you know, I know you can do it with Ableton, I'm just, I just wanted to show you how it works. So whatever process you do, okay, volume, reverse, effects, it uh, doesn't matter, right? Then, once you click save, if I go back to Ableton now, I'll notice it is automatically refreshing and it'll have the new sample with the changes. So, it's not uh, groundbreaking, I've been working the same way, kind of in logic, but um, in other programs that I've been working with, uh, it doesn't do this automatic refresh, which is pretty cool. And um, one of the th strengths of Cubase is the ability to apply offline effects. And with uh, this method, you know, a a Ableton has this same ability that Cubase has, basically. Um, even simpler, you know, you can take any clip, whether it be on the session view or on the arrange, and open it and uh, do these do do this exact same thing. So, oops, Facebook. So, um, yeah, you can use this method, method for that, for the delay compensation, and like I said, for many, many other cool things, and get creative, and in general, I think working with a wave editor is great. Another great thing is that it allows you to snap, uh, I saved it. Let's say I have, you know, when you're working initially, w when you're going into Ableton, and you're placing your clips, and you kind of have to put it exactly on the ones, you know, to be able to warp them properly. So working with a good wave editor really allows you to zoom in and find the exact spots that you would like, you know, down to the actual 
sample resolution and you can choose the exact spots that you would want and then and then bring that and then once you just save it'll like we said it'll automatically refresh the sample and it'll be much easier to warp because you have it perfect and you don't need to do this beforehand you don't need to say to save as a new sample and drag it back into the project and all that stuff it just automatically refreshes which is really cool and yeah just work with both these programs open consider it just like another screen of Ableton for all intents and purposes have a go at it see ya